Anna, the pretty shepherd, and today I am here to tackle a folklorified fantasy version of a fictional character, Jennifer of Bangerberg. But make it folk. How's that for an intro? Hmm? As some of you may know, I am a huge Witcher fan. I have Geralt over there. Oh, and just before I dive right into the folklorified outfit, I wanted to make a little bit of a note on Yennefer's name, because it's kind of cool. Wenger in Polish actually means Hungarian, and Berg means mountain in German. So Yennefer of Wengerberg is actually Yennefer of the Hungarian mountain. And so anyone who has any sort of problems uh, with me delving into the folklore of it, they can just uh, ash the F you because she's Hungarian. Anyway, the books. I did remember a few details as it was like her obsidian star, the fact that she wears black and white, duh. But I did want to flip through the books just to make sure that I wouldn't miss any key details. I decided to put together an outfit. I had a very particular dress in mind. So without further ado, let me introduce you to one of my most awesome thrift store finds of 2021. This here gorgeous dress is a folk costume from Bavaria, Bayern in Germany. I found this in a thrift store in Hungary. Run-of-the-mill thrift store with modern clothes and jeans and t-shirts and whatnot and I just stumbled across this beauty in there. It has these beautiful stitching and these beautiful details on the bodice, which at first glance I actually thought is cording, which is really cool in and of itself, but wait, because there's more. My knowledge of German costumes is pretty patchy. I figured I would post it on Instagram and ask my German followers, my German friends, if they could identify it. I did get a lot of help, thank you so much, which is why I can now say that it is particularly from the town of Miesbach and what I assumed to be cording. It's even more awesome than that. Are you sitting down? Because you should sit down for this one because it's like mind-blowing. So the peasants over there were very much influenced by the bougie fashions. Bougie. There were stays in fashion, but the peasants, of course, they didn't have the money for the whale bones. So what they did instead is they took reed and placed that into the bodices of the dresses. So that's what we have here. It's something that I've never even heard of before, and I think it's so awesome for peasants to have come up with such a cool method to kind of replicate what they weren't able to afford otherwise. Awesome! Or drip, as the young people would say. I am aware that in the series and in the games they've opted for black and white details, but reading up on the books her dress is just black and she's wearing a white blouse with it. The blouse that I chose to wear I also found in the same thrift store, however I don't think that they are supposed to be a set or anything of the sort, they just look nice. Together. Now the other most important folkloric costume element has to be the apron. I used a totally black apron from Mezukesu. It is a Hungarian folk costume piece. I actually tried to experiment with white aprons just to get more of that contrasting color blocking sort of thing. It wasn't bougie enough, you know? You know what I mean? Now moving on to shoes, I decided to wear lace-up bootsies rather than the older clunky boots. I thought to myself that Yennefer would definitely be the sort of woman who would embrace a newer sort of fashion. I have both of them and I have both of them in black so yay it works with Yen's color scheme. When it comes to Yen's accessories the choices are very obvious. She is always described in the books as wearing only silver. She has a preference for stones rather than pearls and it wasn't all that easy because I myself am a gold and pearl sort of gal. Anyway, I definitely had to incorporate her iconic obsidian star with the little stones. I gave it a lot of thought. And since I've yet to see a folk costume with obsidian jewelry, what I decided to do instead is to go for a silver or silver colored 
star with little stones. More importantly, I thought about something very, very special, the so-called lagiash, a necklace made out of silver coins. And I just so happen to have one of these in my possession. Now, this one is not Hungarian. It could be Russian or perhaps Ukrainian. I'm not entirely sure. It has Cyrillic writing or Cyrillic. I'm not sure how you're supposed to say that in English. The coins themselves are from before 1918. Now, the most awesome thing about this sort of silver coin jewelry is that there were village girls who would go to work and they would actually ask for part of their salary to come in coins that were no longer in use. So they could actually use those silver coins to make themselves necklaces. 10, 20, 30, 40. Even though in the books it is often stated that she wears very little jewelry apart from the choker with the obsidian star, when I thought folklore and jewelry and silver, this baby came to mind. I just can't stress it enough how much I think it's a perfect fit for this outfit. Fit, fit, outfit, perfect fit, outfit. Moving on. The earrings that Yennefer wears in some of the scenes are a little stones, but I don't really have those. So I rummaged in my little jewelry box and I think I came up with something that works pretty well, again, with the silver and folklore theme. I decided to wear these. These are actually earrings from India. They are called Junka. Now, even though this particular earring is not really rooted in European folklore, it does have some layers of folklore to it and also tulips. Need I say more? Next up, I also decided to add a little ring. This one I actually got from one of my viewers. Thank you so much. I got it in my P.O. box. Jennifer isn't necessarily described as wearing a lot of jewels on her fingers. Rings on her fingers. What other jewels do you wear on your fingers? I'm not sure. Never mind. So she isn't described as wearing very many rings, but I figure usually folkloric jewels, at least in Hungarian and Transylvanian costumes, are necklaces, earrings, and rings. And finally, the hairstyle that I chose for this look is actually a Hungarian folkloric hairstyle. And if you're interested in finding out how to make it, please let me know a comment below because I'm very happy to create a video about it. Anyway, I decided to add to it a hair beret, which again is silver and it has the little stones. And I also decided to add horn forks as well as a horn comb. Now, I am aware this one is off-white, is not as snow white as the rest of the things, but it is my favorite comb and I just wanted to add it, so sue me. Now, as I was getting ready to go outside in all of these clothes, I realized that it's actually December and it has snowed over here, so I should probably put on something more. <laughs> and I instantly thought of this. Do you guys remember this? It's what I got from Yule as my secret Santa present two years ago. Yet again, another item which is from folklore. It's from, um, oh my God, it's not gonna come to me. Stop host. It did come to me, wow. <laughs> then as another layer of outerwear, I decided to add some white fox fur accessories. Now, I definitely don't want to dive very deep into the rabbit hole of vintage fur in this particular video. I'll just give you the short and compacted version. All the furs that I own and wear are vintage furs. So in my opinion, it's actually better to honor those animals by giving a purpose to these items instead of, I don't know, tossing them into a landfill. The furs that I'm wearing have been furs for possibly longer than I have been alive. So um, Yennefer is described as wearing a fur trimmed coat in one of the scenes. So again, I thought this would be very fitting to her character. And it also kind of adds that booty feel to the folk costume. Peasants would most often use the pelts of sheep. The predatory animals were reserved for nobility. Foxes was about as 
far as peasants were allowed to go. That was like the height of luxury when it comes to furs. So again, this fits very, very nicely as a puzzle piece into the bougie folkloric costume idea. And finally, I looked in the mirror. I really loved what I saw. However, I kind of felt that the dress itself being all black was a little bit too black. Um, <laughs> I know I've already made arguments for wearing a completely black dress with a white shirt as being on character for Yennefer, but it just felt very dark to my eyes. So I decided to take some liberty clasping hands belt buckle, which is silver, so it's on point and this little trinket this is the fantasy in folk fantasy <laughs> so i have no idea how long this description of every item in detail was probably longer <laughs> than i would think but please brace yourselves for the actual reveal of the total outfit ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> I really, really hope you like the way this outfit came out just as much as I, because I am so very content with how it turned out. It actually feels like something that Yennefer from the books could have worn. It, it, it feels right to me, especially since the inspiration for the books is Central East European and Slavic mythology. It feels very familiar to me and if there was any detail in the outfit which you thought worked perfectly or something that Yen would never wear, then please also just let me know in the comments below. Next time I will strive to do better or not. You're not my mom. If you do like this sort of folkloric fantasy witchery sort of content, then do subscribe to my channel because with the release of season two, there's bound to be more witchery stuff to come. Bye-bye! The silver part of it. Ah! <laughs> you guys, the, the cat tried to jump in through the window and it's closed and I, and I freaked out. It's like I really freaked out. <sighs> Sorry, headphone users. <laughs>